Hey there, this is Vlad from the Insurance Sales Lab. In this video, we're going to go over five automations that agency Zoom sub subscribers should use. If you're an insurance agent who is looking to grow their business, uh, you're going to absolutely love this video because uh, I've invited Mariah Gates, who's a farmer's insurance agent out of Idaho, who has built automations for her agency but also has done that for countless of other agents across the country. So this is not someone who has heard about good ideas and is going to be sharing these today. This is someone who has been doing that for her agency and has also done that for countless of others. So Mariah, thank you so much for being willing to do this today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to, to go over some of the highlights of Agency Zoom. Yeah, uh, I, I know that by the time that we're done with this, a lot of the agency owners who are going to be watching this video will say, man, I wish I would have known about these sooner. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Before you go into each one of those strategies and automations, I did want to ask, how did you uh, first come across automation and agency Zoom? You've been an agent for about seven years, but you just started using this a few years ago. Walk us through what happened there, and then we'll jump into the actual strategies. Yeah, definitely. So as a farmer's agent, um, we didn't really have a good sales program within our own systems. And I've always been a very system driven agent. I always had my own, you know, Excel sheets and different outside systems I would use. And I had to use a lot of different systems to be able to run my agency um, through a marketing program that I was part of. I actually was recommended to look at agency zoom, took a look and just fell in love with the entire idea. Two years ago, it didn't look anything like it looks today. So it's so much better today. But even back then, um, it was just a really attractive product for so many reasons. But really, we just lose so many opportunities in the insurance world because we aren't very well organized when it comes to our leads. A lot of agents, including myself, you know, we were doing a lot of marketing or spending a lot of money on leads, but really not maximizing them. So when I saw this tool, I saw a huge opportunity to be able to, have, to do a lot less marketing, spend a lot less money, and still get the same results. So yeah. I was... I was really excited about the fact that it was a system and uh, definitely spent the first year just bugging agency Zoom like crazy and asking lots of questions. And that's kind of how I became kind of an expert in it. Yeah, I was hosting a workshop for a group of agents not long ago, and I asked them how they manage their leads. So when a lead comes in from EverQuote, Quote Wizard, Smart Financial, any one of the lead vendors, how they work the, the, work the leads. And what shocked me was, they would say, well, when a lead comes in, we just kind of forward the leads to different producers in, in a rotation, and which is mind boggling that agents still refuse to use lead management systems like Agency Zoom. But once you do have a lead management system like Agency Zoom, there's so many different things that you could do with it. What we'd like to do in this video is just boil it down to five main strategies that agents can go ahead and implement today. And if anybody wants to learn more about how to take these strategies and implement them in their agency, learn more strategies from you, they can reach out to you directly. So let's go ahead and dive into the first strategy that you want to demonstrate to the agents and we'll just go through them one by one. Is that fair? Sounds good. Cool. So, um, so the first section would be uh, lead management automation. Of course, you know, we, if we're not writing policies then our businesses are shrinking. So we have to we have to be writing new policies. That's most of our days. Of course, we also service our bit, our book, but this is for leads. So the strategy here would be to have different pipelines as well as different automations that specifically speak to the reason why that lead reached out to you. So for example, if you get a lead from a mortgage lender that you work with or a realtor, that's a very different um, set of uh, templates for texting and emailing than if you were working an internet lead or a live transfer lead or anything else that you might have received into your agency. So really dialing in where your business is coming from and having automation to specifically speak to those leads. Um, we, I do different pipelines for personal lines and commercial because of course those sales processes are very different. So in a personal line sales process, it's pretty quick. Whereas with commercial, we have multiple stages, we have to deal with underwriters. So we actually can not only automate reaching out to the prospect, but also automate and have a set sales process for our staff and the new employees that we hire. So it makes training them much easier. Um, for example, if you have a commercial producer come in, you can clearly tell them that you are going to follow these steps. So they're going to have new leads, contacted, applications, underwriting, so on and so forth. 
So they are going to move them through that sales process. Huge advantage when um, trying to maximize the time that your producers are spending in their agencies. Okay. I'd like to know for me, if I'm buying internet leads, what's the automation that you have built out for agents who are buying new internet leads? Yeah. So for internet leads, when the, the lead comes in, so a really big benefit of agency zoom is integrations as well. So you can have your leads directly integrated into agency zoom. So when they're assigned to you, they'll show up as a new lead in your system. And immediately that lead will receive an email and a text message to connect with that person. Obviously with internet leads, we all know that time to connect and first to quote is extremely important. So this way that um, individual prospect has a text and an email from you, usually before your producers ever had a chance to pick up the phone. And that way, when you are calling, it's a familiar number. They know who you are and you have a better chance of them answering the call. With a text message that goes out, what's the general idea of the message? Is it to get someone on the phone or what does the message say? Yeah, so the text message that we've been using, we've used a couple different variants, obviously, because um, automation is kind of a living, breathing thing. You want to try new stuff and see what works the best. The one that we've had the best success with is a text message that goes out with the lead's name in it, says, thank you for requesting a quote. How much are you currently being charged for your insurance? So that one, um, we used to say, um, how much are you paying for your insurance? But of course, after going through the insurance sales lab, we started asking people what they were being charged for their insurance. And that has definitely worked the best. They'll reply back with the amount and then we can get them on the phone. Awesome. Very good. And once and you put in that it's coming from farmer's insurance in the text message or do you keep yeah, it generic? So it has the name of the producer as well as the name of the office um, plugged into that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So new lead comes in, it hits the new pipeline. I call the lead. They don't answer. Do they sit in the new or do they go to contact it? How do you work that? Yeah, good question. So new is um, that stage is completely designed for trying to connect with that lead. So it's going to continue to send out automations as long as they sit into the new stage. And you or your producer is also going to receive um, notifications in your tasks to continue to call. So we call every lead twice. Uh, we call right back if they don't answer. And then we send them a text that we left them a message asking when we should call back. So it really, we reach out several times because we really want to be the first person to connect with them to increase that likelihood of quote and close. Um, but if they do not respond and we've called multiple times throughout the day, then on the next day, they would receive another set of automation. So it continues to run. It actually runs for 14 business days. You would be surprised that we actually get quite a few responses in day 10, day 12, um, because sometimes they're being bombarded. So you have to continue to follow up consistently to get that opportunity. After, after you speak with them, so if they reply to a text or an email or you talk to them on the phone, that's when they go into contacted. Contacted is just kind of the placeholder where you might be finishing up the quote or gathering some missing information. It's the placeholder between the first conversation and when the quote is delivered. So sometimes we skip it all together if we quote them on the phone in that moment. Okay, first conversation and the time that a quote has been delivered. So if I call you and you tell me, hey, give me a call back after five o'clock today. I can't go through the full quote today or right now. They get moved into contacted, right? Yes. Or not yet? Yes. Okay. Yes, they'd be in contacted because you've had some kind of communication with them. Okay. And then once we get on the phone and I go through your home and auto policy and I give you the price, then they go to quoted. Correct. Okay. And they live there until we close them or we do what? Um, so in the quoted section, the day after they've been moved to quoted, they'll start receiving automation, texts and emails, and you'll get call reminders as well to follow up to get a decision on that quote. Of course, we're trying to get them to say yes to purchase the policy. So that process uh, we run also for two weeks. And um, after the two weeks or after we've received a decision from them, it's either going to go to sold. So we're going to move it over to the sold stage or we're going to actually recycle this lead. So the smart cycle is another um, really large advantage of agency Zoom because every person that we, every lead that comes in, whether we quote them or not, um, we actually recycle them every six months. In my agency, we do it four times. So we reach out and try to sell to that person four additional times. I know some agents who have cloned out those recycles and they'll do it um, every six months for 10 different cycles. So it really allows you to stay in contact and maximize 
the sale opportunity. Um, even if today was a no, doesn't mean that tomorrow will be a no. And the typical scheduled date for a smart cycle would be right before the policy renews or when an accident falls off, ticket falls off. How do you decide when you follow up with them? Yeah, great question. Um, so that is definitely depending on the lead, right? So if we um, aren't able to get them on the phone to give a decision and they respond through a text or something like that, um, we may or may not have a, a, a cancellation date, an X date. If we don't have an X date, then they'll recycle them out either six or 12 months, kind of depending on the policy. If it's a home insurance policy, they might do 12 months. If it's a, a auto insurance policy, they might do six. If we know when an accident falls off or a ticket falls off, then we definitely want to smart cycle uh, right after or right before that date when that happens. So if you put an accident falls off, you have full control of when you are going to try to sell to this person again. So you can pick a year out, you could pick right before their X date or right before or after a ticket falls off. So you have the choice. And then all you have to do is select the pipeline that it will go into, which is your quotes not closed. And they'll receive a whole new set of automation when they go through that pipeline. And the messages that they receive from the day that you smart cycle them and the day that they reappear in your pipeline, they are messages that you have pre-built text messages and emails to stay engaged with the prospects. So if they choose to reach out to you beforehand, they're able to do so. Is that right? Correct. So um, drip campaigns are tricky because with every single email marketing campaign out there, we're all fighting against all of the spam filters. So the spam filters, if you are emailing people too often and people report you as spam, then your emails won't land in their inbox. So it's a delicate balance of staying in touch, but also not sending too many messages. Um, so we do have a drip campaign that goes out while they're in the smart cycle that will keep them in touch. And we use it as kind of an education base. So things like um, what to expect when you have a claim. And there's some standard information in there. If you have questions, please respond to us. Um, there's some steps in there about um, some vital coverages that everyone should have in their policies to kind of bring awareness to them and ask them to respond if they have questions. So we do have that. I will say some agents I work with choose to have a drip campaign, others do not, and they don't reach back out until um, the lead is recycled. Okay, and then when the lead goes into the quote not closed, what part of the deal stage do you put them into or what, where in the pipeline do they go? Yeah, so there's a separate pipeline for that. So this pipeline is for brand new leads and then under quotes not closed, that is a separate pipeline. So each of these stages here is an additional attempt to reach out. So each stage represents a new six month period that we're reaching out to them and trying to um, connect. So it goes through this pipeline and that is so that all leads, no matter where they came from, no matter what their source is, they can all receive an automation that speaks to the fact that we quoted them in the past, our rates are now more competitive, and we want to try again. Okay. As a producer whose main role is to sell, how do I know what leads to work first, second, and third when I show up at the office every morning? Yeah, so the producer works through the task list. So you'll have a list of tasks that are assigned based on the automations that have come in. So I would say this is where they are gonna spend some of their time going through this list. But also as far as priority, that is why we have the pipelines listed one, two, and three, because obviously brand new leads are going to be a much higher conversion rate versus someone that we've maybe reached out to you know, for two years that we never ever quoted. So those will still recycle through, but we don't want our producers spending a lot of time there. Now, what you'll see on the pipeline is these tags. So the tags um, bring attention to the leads. So like this one says lender referral. For us in our office, that's a top priority. If you have a lender referral that's new, you're dropping everything and calling that person first because those referral partnerships are very important. Um, cross sells, of course, that's our existing clients. And we all know that it costs a lot more money to acquire a new customer than it does to keep our existing ones. So we also prioritize our existing customers. So those tags that we add for all different kinds of reasons will help us prioritize our day as well when looking through the uh, pipeline view. Okay, awesome. Um, anything else in the pipeline that you want to go over? Because I have a few follow-up questions on servicing. So once you do get a client, and you're ready to onboard them. And once you have onboard them with servicing, I'd like to ask a few questions on that, but on the new lead side, of, on the 
when you're working new leads? Anything else the agents should know about? So I would say, I mean, there's so much, it's such a big program, but one of my, uh, one of the things I always really encourage every agent to take advantage of is the opportunities and quote section. So this is really important. Opportunities is where you can document the insurance that they currently have. So their current carrier, the product and the premium, if you are able to gather that. And then the quote section is your product carrier and premium that you provided. And we attach the PDF version of the quote. The benefit to this is that if we do not close this client and we call him in six months, we can pull up in one place exactly what they had last time, what we quoted last time, and the all the details of the quote. So we can call the customer and say, you know, hi, Mr. Smith, we gave you a quote six months ago. Do you still have your F-150 and your Mazda CX-9? Great. Um, you know, is you and Mrs. Smith still the only drivers in the household? Perfect. So it looks like last time you were paying $150 a month with State Farm. We're now down to $120 a month. Let's get that policy started. Visa or MasterCard, right? <laughs> so that way it's very easy. It doesn't take a lot of time to go back and work your requotes. Um, and again, you have a really good opportunity to capture that business a second time or a third time or a fourth time, depending on how long into the system they are. Yeah. And I know we're blurring out some of the information for uh, to protect the, the data here of your clients and prospects. But what I love about just looking at this at a glance, I can see how much opportunity I have in terms of premium on the new leads that just came in, also from the contact and how many people we've quoted. It's just so easy to see at a quick glance at the very top what kind of premium we're working with that month. So I love That's that. Awesome another way to prioritize so for example once you've quoted them and you've put in that premium when you go through your quotes not closed um a uh, list and you can clearly see premium right where this this particular lead had thirty eight hundred dollars with the premium quoted last time and this one only had 960 probably going to prioritize the higher premium client and get a call out to them as soon as possible so it's another metric you can use for prioritization yeah Awesome. Okay. So let's say you close a deal. Where do we go from there? Yeah. So um, onboarding would be next. This is really the only, like the best way to show onboarding. So now we're kind of over here in this lifecycle automation piece. This is where all the automation is built and you can customize it and everything. So there's prospecting um, automation, which we already talked about a little bit, and then onboarding. So that happens as soon as they become a client and the onboarding um, runs for their first year as a client. After they've been a client for 12 months, they actually roll into a retain campaign. Um, so it's a little bit different. But onboarding for us is a great opportunity to help our customers understand how to best interact with our agencies. When I was an agent um, prior to this particular office I'm in now in Idaho, um, I only ever had one staff member and customers would ask for me like crazy. And that's very disruptive. It can make it very hard for us as agency owners to focus on what we need to do to drive our businesses forward instead of responding to customer requests. And I hear this in offices that I talk to all the time. So we use this as a way for them to know this is who you're going to speak with going forward in a very warm way. One of the benefits of using agency Zoom over a lot of the competitor CRMs is that you can embed images, GIFs, and videos right into your automation and your emails. So this actually warm introduces my office manager and lets our customers know that she is their first point of contact when they need help with their policy. So it takes it off of my producer. They know not to reach out to the producer and they're not reaching out to me. This is really helpful. We also do a lot of other things within our onboarding, including cross-sell. So we cross-sell um, on additional like life insurance, for example, additional endorsements that can be added to home policies. Um, we offer a umbrella policies, we ask for referrals, all of that is done in here. And there's lots of agents out there that do other things as well. For example, agents in California, they're recommending earthquake insurance to every person that they sell a home policy to. Um, some areas of the country, they're recommending flood insurance. So you can customize this to really fit your area and um, some of the additional information you want your customers to be aware of, but you don't always have the time to get to all of those pieces with every customer. Yeah. So someone who might be seeing this for the first time, it seems like a lot of information to digest because there's so much new 
things on the screen, but what would you say an agent who is maybe just starting to use agency Zoom or considering using the platform um, as far as uh, advice of what to incorporate first when you first start using the platform and then what layers to add on over time? Yeah, so I think it depends on your greatest need. So if you are having a difficult time writing new business and that is your biggest need, then I would really focus on your prospecting automations and getting that pipeline uh, working very well. If you are in an agency where you are writing a lot of business, but your retention is very poor, then I would focus on your onboarding um, piece and your retain automations to stay in contact with your customers. Um, there's also agencies where a lot of their day is pulled away because they're servicing clients and they're reactively servicing clients, not being proactive. Um, the next section we're gonna cover is the service center and that can be very helpful as well. Now, at the same time, Agency Zoom does have three different tiers of their system, and they are priced for different, uh, there are three different price tiers, I guess I should say. So the service center that we're going to cover next is only available in the pro version, um, but as far as prospecting and onboarding automation, that is available in any of their accounts. Okay. Uh, you So as part of a new client onboarding process, is that where you get the Google review or is that part of the service? Yeah, that's where we get the Google review. So you'll see in here that um, I actually do a Google review drawing. So mine says that there's a $50 gift card um, drawing that they can get, but all of there is a general template that comes with agency Zoom, but basically you want to send out this email or you can send out a text. Only the emails will filter the reviews though. So for my agency, we allow any five or four star review to post to our page. Um, but this rate, my agency will actually show five stars on the email itself. And the customer will click the number of stars. If they click four or five, it will then direct them to the Google page for them to post their review. So that's how the filters work. Um, but you can send this review request out as many times as you want. We send it out twice. Once it's sent out one time, agency Zoom will send it out every six months until they give you a review. That's super cool. I know just recently looking at your Google page for your farmer's agency, you were over 50, over 100 reviews, right? 101. Well, this is the Google review section in agency Zoom. Um, we're at 101 right now. And um, yeah, I mean, I think we had like 15 when I got agency Zoom two years ago. Oh, yeah. um, so it is so helpful. And we get a lot of call in from call um, ins from Google. And as a captive agent, you know, we, we really want um, customers that are looking for great customer service because that's our advantage because we know our carrier so well and, and can provide that really great service. So people that are searching on Google are looking for really good customer service. They, they call you because of your reviews. And in my town, I, I've had this agency for not even three years yet, um, just almost three years. And in my city, I have the third highest Google reviews of any insurance agent in my city. The other two have been agents for over 20 years and we're gonna catch them this year. So if you're not doing this, which most agents I talk to are not doing this, it is a huge miss because you want people calling in and these are motivated buyers to buy based on your reputation. What do you need to have as far as reviews to be number one? Yeah, so um, for my area, we have to get uh, to 200 reviews to be able to be number one in our area. So uh, what we're doing is, of course, asking our new customers, and we uploaded a list of our existing clients as well. So they've been receiving requests for reviews. But every day, my office manager is talking to you know a member or customers of ours all the time. And every time she talks to one of those customers, she's asking them if they're satisfied with the service that she's provided. And when they say yes, she's asking them for a Google review. We actually were able to create our own service pipeline in the service center um, to actually automate follow-up. We call them asks. Um, and there's a few different things that we have, but one of them is Google reviews. So every time she asks someone for a Google review, she'll send them a text with our link. And then we, and we actually add them as a service request inside of our agency Zoom. And that particular client will receive automated follow-ups and reminders to complete that Google review. So we continue to ask, even though my staff does not have to uh, do any of that follow-up. We've automated all of it. That's so great because a lot of agents who ask for a Google review, their clients say, yes, I'll do that. But then the client doesn't know where to go to find the right place to leave a review. 
Whereas what you're doing is you're sending a direct link of where the prospect could just click and leave a review. That removes all the friction from the process. That's great. Yeah. And that's actually why we came out with the drawing because our follow-ups then are very, um, are a very nice warm drawing that we want to remind them. We don't want them to miss the opportunity to be involved in the drawing that we do monthly. And we send them the link and remind them to do the review. So that's that was part of the reason we created that. Cool. All right. Just so everybody's clear, these automations, you don't need to have all of them, but if you do want all the ones that Mariah has, you can reach out to her and she can tell you more about how that can be built out in your agency because every agency runs a little differently. And uh, that's something you've been doing for agents for uh, quite some time, right, Mariah? You've been able so to- So I've been setting up agents um, for a year. Agency Zoom asked me a couple of times and I turned them down a few times at first um, and then kind of got started um, really slowly. And then it kind of took off after that. So I've helped 127 agents so far, captive, independent, all over the country um, in the last year, setting up their agency Zoom. I tell every single agent, you guys don't need me. You really don't. Agency Zoom is an amazing platform, um, but the people that hire me to help them, it's just because it's time consuming. So if you wanna be able to spend time working in your agency and selling policies and helping your team and marketing, and not building automation, I can do that for you. So we get the systems built out in a week. Um, took me several months as a new agent, playing around and learning it. So I really shortened the learning curve and then have a support group as well to help people learn this very robust tool. Awesome, cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, in regards to service automations, I wanna know if I have an agency, 500,000, 10,000 policies, how do I go about using agency zoom uh and being very effective with it uh is there a simple way where i can upload a list of clients and start using this how would you recommend going about that yeah so um if you are an independent agent and um, there is integrations with ams systems so agency zoom is now owned by vertifor they have qq catalyst as their ams so that is the strongest integration um but you also can integrate with easy links now starts you know all of the ones listed here so that, if you are an independent agent, is the easiest way to um, get your book of business in here. They also now do have the PL Rater integration as well. If you are a captive agent, you need to get your customers into an Excel sheet, and then you can upload them. So in the customer tab, there's an upload option right here under actions, and you got to import them. But the fastest way is to put the data into an Excel sheet first and then upload. If you're going to do them individually, this is time consuming. The largest agent that I've worked with um, that was making the change has um, 10,000 policies and they're putting people in as they go with servicing and through renewal reminders as well. Um, so if you're captive, it's a little harder unless your particular captive um, company allows any kind of export of data. My captive company does not. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Anything else on the servicing side of things that you want to point out that would be helpful for agents to know? Yeah. So service pipelines, um, are so helpful. So we all know that you know our customers um, are supposed to, you know, our customers are supposed to take care of their their documents and their payments. But we all know that doesn't always happen. So we are always um, left with this decision: Do we want to just let those customers go that need a lot more servicing, or do we want to spend the time on servicing those customers? You know, it's that 80/20 rule that 20% of your customers take up 80% of your time. So we want to provide a high-level touch service. But at the same time, we want to focus on other more important things in our agency. So with automating our service follow-ups, it allows the best of both worlds. So when we have a client who didn't pay their bill on time, all we have to do is open a service request. And I'll use myself as the example here. We'll type in the customer's name. It'll find the customer and the related policy. Fill this out. Maybe takes 10 seconds. Click save. And now that customer is going to receive text and email reminders um, that their bill is late and we want to prevent cancellation. There's This is just one example. Document follow-up, inspection follow-up, claims follow-ups, um, reinstatements, all of that can be automated through Service Center. So, And you get reports for all of this information, but that way your team can focus on more important uh, priorities in the agency, but your customers still get that great customer service from you. Just that alone could be such a time saver. I'm thinking the number of times that service team members have to remind themselves in their calendar or whatever method they use to remind themselves to send out manual emails 
Now they don't have to do any of that. The system does it. You just build it out once. And depending on what it is that they need to do, whether it's submit a, a document or um, pay their bill, they'll be reminded by the system, not the CSR. Yeah, it's and it's great because it comes from your phone numbers. Like for a captive agent like us, our company will send the carrier, will send out information, of course, but it's obviously not from our agency. It's, it's from farmers or from travelers or Safeco, but these will come from the same phone numbers that your customers will call and interact with your staff on. So they're, they're really great. They work really well. Um, and the sky is kind of the limit. Like I have that agent I mentioned that has the very large agency. He said that agency Zoom automation saves him a 40 hour employee. So wow. that's how much automation he has. And, uh, and you can continue to tick away at it. I mean, even agents that are selling health insurance and Medicare supplements, you can automate those processes through this. All right, cool. So we covered the sales side. We covered some automations and things that we can do on the onboarding. We covered the service side. What else should agents know about when it comes to using a platform like Agency Zoom? So um, reports are a really big piece of the information that's very helpful to an agent. So if you are um, an agent like I was in the beginning, um, you probably could potentially maybe not know where your business comes from, or you don't know where your good business comes from, where your ROI is in your marketing, all of that. Those are numbers that we all need to have, but they can be extremely time consuming to track or to put together in general. In agency Zoom, as, as long as you set it up properly and you're tracking your lead sources, where your business comes from and your marketing, um, as your staff does their normal daily sales, um, all of those reports are compiled for you. Um, like you don't have to do anything. So you can just go into them. So right here, you're looking at conversion by lead source. Um, you can see the number of leads that have run through my system and from brand new lead opportunity to sold. So not even quoted to sold, just new lead to sold. We have a 31.3% conversion rate. So if we get the lead, we have a 31% chance we're going to sell that lead a policy. Um, and then I can also go in and look at from quoted to sold or any other mixes of information I want. But this helps me to decide what marketing worked, what didn't work. And it doesn't take me any time. I don't have to fill out Excel sheets. I don't have to do complicated math. It's very easy. So lots of reports. We can even see our new business um, sales by zip code. So we can know where our, we're actually writing policies, what zip codes, and we can target those zip codes for marketing. So, so many reports, also reports to keep track of your sales team and their activity. All of our calls are logged through agency Zoom. So every single call that's placed shows up in the history um, activity for that lead, but I also have a report so I can see how many dials my producers made, how long they were on the phone, how many texts they sent, how many emails they sent. And I can look at all of this anywhere that I am, um, whether I'm in the office or anywhere I have a computer. Um, the other great benefit of Agency Zoom is they're the only CRM with an app. So while I'm on the go or on vacation, my app will actually send me a push notification that we've sold a policy and I can access all of my leads and customers as well. So the ability to manage your agency with the data that's in Agency Zoom is huge. Yeah, I remember the first time I got on the phone with you and I asked you where your business is coming from. You said, well, um, I have these six different categories and from events, we close this percentage, from Facebook, we close this percentage, Winbacks, we close this percentage, cross sell this percentage. You knew to the, uh, the exact numbers of close rate for each one of the different lead sources, which is not common. Very few agents to know what their general close rate is. You knew for each category what the close rate is because you're using yeah. this tool in that way. That's really cool. Yeah, definitely uh, changes the way that you look at your agency because I there was marketing that I thought was really beneficial that wasn't was kind of uh, hard to swallow that, but but glad that I have the data now and I know better. Yeah, cool. All right, uh, what else should agents know when it comes to utilizing agency Zoom as far as automation? I think we covered the big points, but to uh, close out here, is there anything else that you feel like is a must use strategy? Uh, for agents who are already using Agency Zoom or considering getting set up with Agency Zoom? So I would, so strategies, we've went over some strategies. There is so much um, that we can talk about around, you know, cross-sell, winning cancellations back, 
Um, obviously every single person that you touch in your, in your business can be an opportunity, even referral partners. We have relationship pipelines and I use that to keep organized on who my referral partners are. Um, when I last spoke with them, scheduling myself reminders to stay in contact with them. Um, you know, gosh, I haven't had lunch with this person in a while reminders in there to do that. There's a lot, but some things you need to know if you're considering agency zoom is that agency zoom CRM has a lot of integrations and you have to integrate your own email provider and phone provider. So it doesn't come with the texting or the calls built in. These are the different providers you can integrate with. If you don't want to use a full blown phone service, you can use Twilio just for text and call very cheap and easy to use, but that sometimes trips up agents because um, every CRM is a little different. There are some out there that they own the phone numbers that the messages come from and how you communicate with the leads and the customers. With Agency Zoom, you own your phone system and you simply need to integrate it. Um, so that's something to really keep in mind. And then if you are a captive agent watching this, you're probably going to have zero integration. So just be aware. If you are a farmer's agent watching this, um, we did get uh, Agency Zoom to build us an InsureBot. So we actually do have a link so when you put the information into Agency Zoom, the prospects information, you can click one button and it loads your quote screen. So it eliminates double entry. But if you're independent, you're going to get the elimination of double entry if you have PL Reader. Yeah, that, that's a huge time saver. Just using the InsureBot, click on that and all the information goes that was provided as part of the lead goes right into the quoting system. Um, yeah. Hugely um, beneficial, especially when getting buy-in for your team to use it. Because anytime you ask them to do extra work, it can be a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. Mariah, thank you so much for being willing to do this. I know you have so much more to share uh, when it comes to this. If agents want help with getting these automations implemented in their agency, how do you want them to reach out to you? Yeah, so I have a website. Um, I'll pull it up here. It's kind of long, but it's AZ implementationconsultant.com. So this is my website. There is a full demo of agency zoom on here. And then on the services page are the services I provide and there's different tiers. Um, I, the elite package is going to be full blown, everything built as well as weekly calls Wednesdays and Fridays with me live for help and access to my five, my private Facebook group. And then because of demand, um, I have also started offering a la carte so for agents that are maybe smaller agencies or new that just want help with a couple of automation workflows, I will now offer that as well. Um, so much, you know, much cheaper, easier, and we can get you started a little bit faster. But that's how you would reach out. If you have questions about my service, since we didn't talk about that much, on the Contact Us page, um, I do host a call twice a week for any agent that has a question on Agency Zoom or how I can help them with it. So you can jump on the call. I always want to make sure everyone that hires me is 100% informed and, and um, completely 100% uh, informed as well as confident in their decision to work with me. So that's why I do those Q&A questions. Awesome. I love that there is ongoing support besides just the initial setup because that's ultimately what agents need. Uh, it's not just it to be set up, but they need to know how it's set up and how they could continue to use it. Um, well, I appreciate it. Hopefully we can do this again soon. I'll post this in our Facebook group, see what additional questions people have. Uh, and maybe we can do this again here in the near future. And I'll ask you some of the questions that agents will ask as uh, part of us posting this video. Thank you again so cool. much. for. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.